Hi everyone, and welcome to another lesson. Um, if you're anything like me, um, when you're a youngster or even as an adult, um, you loved identifying countries, their capitals. And for me, I loved finding out which country's flag was which. Um, if there was a quiz on flags, I would love it. Um, if people got stuck or if I was watching a TV programme and a flag popped up, I would always try and guess what it was. So this today, um, if you're anything like me, will be really exciting. Now, what we're going to try and do, I'll show you the, the finished product, uh, the finished game that we're going to end up doing. So if you just bear with me a second, I'm just going to show you my screen. And um, so this is the game. If I hit my green flag, we want to get a set of six flags to pop up, randomly selected from a list. And then it will ask to identify a flag and we can click and it will tell us whether we were right or wrong. So asking for Italy now. So I know Italy, for example, is this one here. So I clicked on that, got it correct. Next one, click on Chile. Now I know which one Chile is, and it, but I know it's not this one. If I click on it, it tells me I was wrong. So the idea is that we'll get a game where you've got randomly selected, and you'll see each time um, it, you get one right or wrong, every time you answer the question, it then moves on and gives you a new one to, to guess at. So that's what we're aiming for. So I'll just close that down. If I, um, this is the starter project already open. Um, if I just go back a step, so if you just, if you're starting this and you're not part of one of my lessons, um, like my official lessons, um, I won't share where to get the starter project from or I won't show you in a sec, but the link to it is below this video. So you can always click on that to get the starter project. If you are in Scratch, you can click on my stuff and you go to my class and you'll see, again, you'll see, you might have to click on the right arrow to get to it, but you'll see teacher resources. So this is where I put the file for you and I guess the flag starter. I'll click on that. And then once you've done that, you can click on remix. which brings up the starter project and you'll see what I'm going to do is change it. So I'm going to make this prof code. So we've got our starter project. Now to introduce you to the starter project, what, what's going on with what's already set up for you. So the things that are set up for you, we've got a list here called flags. It's empty at the moment and we'll get onto that in a, in a second. We've got, um, Something when the green flag is clicked, let me just zoom in so you can see that a little bit better. When the green flag is clicked, we're going to add a set of countries to the list of flags. So that's where, why that's empty at the moment because we haven't clicked green flag to start again. We've got a blank flag down here. You'll see that in a minute. And we've got um, a no backdrop. So it's a plain white backdrop. So we're not going to do anything with that for now. Theoretically, you know, you could change that if you wanted to, but for now we're going to leave it blank. I don't want the colours of flags and things to get overwhelmed for now. The next thing that we do already have though, if I click on flag, at the moment it's blank. If I go to costumes, you'll see that we've got a costume for a variety of different countries. So we've got Japan, Belgium, Italy, Turkey and so on. So we've got the costumes there and at the bottom you'll see there's some blank flags. These are there for you to be able to add your own flags to this game. You can draw the flags, add them in, and then use them in the game as part of the test. Okay, so um, to give you an example of that, um, I've got a picture. I, I've put a link um, to this picture. So if we just zoom out, you'll see the whole thing. It's got loads of countries on there. Um, and I put a link below the video, or I've shared it with you if you're part of one of the lessons. And it, on here is a whole load of different countries and their flags. So you can see, for example, I've got Lithuania here. It's gold at the top, green in the middle, red at the bottom. So let's create the Lithuanian flag. So remember, gold, green, red. Okay. So I'm going to go back to scratch. And at the top, so the first thing I want to do is change the colour. So I want because I want to be adding something that's gold. Okay. So I'm, I think that's close enough to gold for me. Okay. So I'm going to put 
a rectangle, which I'm going to draw. And that goes across the top. So the next thing I need to do is I've clicked away from that rectangle because if I change this color now and that was still selected, it would change the color of that rectangle. And actually what I want to do is add another rectangle on. So, um, so I click away, the blue box goes around from it. So now I'm going to choose green because that was the next color. And it was darker, so I'm going to make it darker. So that's kind of, I'm happy with that green. So again, make sure that the rectangle tool is selected. And now I'm going to draw a rectangle on here. It's the green rectangle. And then the final one was that red. So I'm going to go change this over to the red color. I need want it to oh, see what I mean about that, that color changing. So I need to change that back again to the green. OK, so I'm going to make sure I click away from that rectangle, then change the color. And then once I'm happy with that color, I'm going to draw another rectangle at the bottom. It's the red. Okay. So I've got gold, green, red, which was the colors of the Lithuanian flag. And I'm going to call this. So at the top where it says costume, it says your flag one at the moment. I'm going to change that to Lithuania. So I've now added the Lithuanian flag. Now you've got more, uh, you've got another blank one there. Now, if you wanted to keep adding these, I would just duplicate this blank one and keep duplicating it because you can add as many, many flags as you want. I mean, it all depends on how much time you want to put into this. Um, but you've got Lithuanian flag um, and then you could add, I don't know, um, Bolivia or um, Paraguay or other, you can pick the, the the other flags that you want to add in. Okay, so we've we've drawn the flag. Um, now what we need to do is create the list of flags. So going back to code, now we're going to use something that we haven't used yet, um, which is something um, where we define blocks. So rather than having to kind of create the same code lots of times or um, if we've got something that ends up being really long or something like that, we can actually condense it and save it as a block on its own. So what we need to then do is add that one block that represents this whole thing. And we're going to do it with this adding of flags to a list. So if I go down to, the, to this one here that says my blocks, I'm going to make a block. Now the block I'm going to call, this is to add um, blocks to the list. So we're going to say create flag list. Always best to give it a name that makes sense. What is it doing? What's the purpose? Okay, so I'm going to call it create flag list and hit OK. Now you'll see now that I've got this block here that says define. So what define means kind of um, what does it mean? Okay, so what does it mean to create a flag list? Okay, so what what we're going to do is to start off the flag list when before we create it needs to be empty. So I'm going to do, go to variables. And um, so under the make a list, you've got the dark orange and I want to del not delete one. I want to delete all. And if just in case it's changed, you need to make sure it says delete all of flags. And then what I want to do is once I've deleted them all, I want to add all the flags that we've done. Now, you'll see I've got Japan, Belgium, Italy, Turkey, and so on, down to Bangladesh, but we haven't got the Lithuania flag that I did earlier. So I'm going to add another one to this list and type in Lithuania. Okay. If you created more flags, you need to add them to this list because this basically um, is what the, the program uses to say, right, what flag should I add in to this game? What can I select from? Um, so make sure, please, that you, if you've created more flags, that you add them to this list. So we've got that, that 
kind of program, that block defined now. And what we need to do is when the green flag is clicked, we need to create that flag list. So when the green flag is clicked, it will run all of that. But all I need at the moment is, is that one block. It's that easy, it's, it's really easy to see. Now it comes into its own in a minute because we're gonna need to, for each question on the game, we need to generate six random flags. Now, the, if we were doing it kind of the old way, we'd ha maybe have to repeat the same bit of code six times, or we'd have to put repeat and then put a little bit of code in, and it can become quite cumbersome. Whereas if, with this, we can create another um, block that chooses a random flag. So I'm just gonna move this up out of the way a little bit, just so I've got a little bit of space. So I'm zoomed in, you might not be as zoomed in as me because obviously I need to try and make sure that you can see things. So let's add um, a, a program um, or a block to choose random flags. Before we do that, each time we choose a random flag, we want to create a, uh, or we want to add them to another list of the flags that are chosen for this particular question. So we're gonna make a list again, and I'm gonna call this chosen flags. Okay, now, when you create things like lists or variables, um, you can, in Scratch, put spaces in. I personally don't like to, because when it comes to actual typed computer programming, many languages don't allow you to put spaces in the names of variables, um, and lists are called something called arrays. Now, an array is just a list of items, um, and you can have a list of lists and things like that, but basically they don't very rarely allow you to put spaces in those variables and lists. So there's different ways you can, if you want multiple words in it, you can, there's different ways you can do it. So you can start with a lowercase word and then like I've just done, oh, one second, there is start the next word with a capital letter. You could, put an underscore in to represent a space. You could just leave it and hope that people can spot, or you, you know, you can spot and understand what uh, chosen flags all lowercase means. You could put a hyphen in. Now some things don't, again, don't sometimes allow hyphens and stuff. Personally, I quite like just making it a capital letter at the start of each new word. Okay. So I'm gonna hit okay on that. And that, by the way, um, when you use lowercase and capital letters, it's something called camel case. So if you imagine the humps of a camel, those capital letters are like the humps of the camel. So um, it's quite a, quite a fun uh, name for something in programming. So we've got um, we've got that chosen flag list, and also um, when we do things, we are going to need a number for a flag. So in lists and things, the position of it is is done by a number. So we're gonna to need to make a variable to store a flag number. So again, I'm gonna call it flag number, but I'm gonna do flag lowercase and then capital N for number and type the rest of the word. So flag number. Again, it's gonna be for all sprites for the whole game. So we've now got three things on here. We've got a list of all the flags. We've got a list for the chosen flags that are part of that question and we've got a variable called flag number, and we'll see how that gets used in a moment. So let's, so we said earlier on, we're gonna create a block to choose a random flag. So let's do that now. So I'm gonna make another block. So I've gone to my blocks, make a block. I'm going to uh, call this one, choose random flag. Now you could, like I've done in previous ones, you could use camel case. Again, Scratch doesn't mind having spaces, but other programming languages do, so why not get used to doing it now? So I'm gonna do choose random flag, I'm gonna do it in camel case, and then hit okay on that. So you can see now I've got this opportunity to define what does it mean to choose a random flag. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this um, flag number variable. So we're gonna pick a random number from 
our list of flags and put that in the variable. So we're going to put it in the variable. So let's put that in bit. We know that bit is part of it here. So we're going to set that flag number variable to a number, but we're not going to set it to a fixed number. We're going to set it to a random number, but it's a random number specific to a number based on how many flags there are in the list. If there was 10 flags on the list in the list, we'd want it between one and 10. If, we, if there was 20 flags in your list, we'd want the number between one and 20. So the length of the list is important. So we're going to pick a random number. Now the number is going to start at one, but the maximum number, and if you look at flags at the lists on the right hand side here, you will see that at the bottom it says length zero because there's nothing in there at the moment. If we started the game and added some to it, it might be a length of eight or nine or 10 or however many flags you've done. So we want it to pick up this number called length. And it's really easy to do. We go to variables and under lists, these darker orange bits, so the variables are in light orange and the lists are dark orange. In the darker one, you'll find one down here that says length of something. I'll pop it in there. Now I've put it in and it says length of chosen flags. Now I don't want it to pick from the flags that have already been selected. We're choosing a flag from the list of all of the flags. So I'm going to make sure that it says the flags list, not chosen flags list. And then what I need to do is I'm going to add that item to the chosen flags. So that's going to go into the list of flags that are selected for this particular question. So we are going to do add to the chosen flags. So again, so I've got add something to and make sure it says chosen flags, not flags. We're adding this to say which ones have actually been selected. Um, we're then going to um, choose the um, we're going to add this item in the flag. So we're going to find. So we've chosen a number from the flags one. We're going to find that num that item. So we need to get the, the number that it's picked. OK, so it's picked a random number. We're going to find the item out of not the chosen flags, out of the flags and put it into the chosen flags. OK. So what we've got now is we've got this little bit of program now that chooses a random flag and it puts it into the chosen flag one. So if I now add, I'm going to go to my blocks and I'm going to do choose a random flag. So I've got when the green flag is clicked, it creates the flag list and then it chooses a random flag. So let's click the green flag and see if that works. There you go. So I've got my list of flags. I've got nine in this list, you can see. Um, and then the chosen flag this time, when I click the green flag of Belgium, let's make sure it's random. So if I click on green again now, I've got Chile. I've now got Japan. I've got Lithuania. So you can see it's random. So let's move this bit just out of the way because the next bit I'm working on is, is still in this kind of when the green flag is clicked bit. Okay. Now each time the green at the moment um, we're starting each question when the green flag is clicked. We'll get on to how it kind of restarts every time in, in a little while but let's get ready for the first question. So we create the flag list which is perfect, that's fine and it's empty each time. But what we need to do is each time a question starts that list of chosen flags needs to empty. So a little bit like we did earlier on, we deleted all of the flags at the start of the game. This time, each question, we're going to delete the chosen flags. So I go to variables, I'm going to go down to the dark orange for the lists. And I, so in between these two, I'm going to do, oh, sorry, do you know what? I've put the wrong block in. So I'm just going to take that one back out again. I need the delete all block. So I'm going to delete all 
of chosen flags. I'm going to put that in between the create flag list and choose a main flag. And what I need for each question is I need there to be six flags shown. So what I want to do is I, this choose random flag, I'm going to repeat six times. So if I go to control, we've got a repeat block here. And if we see, I just put that so that it goes around that choose random flag. If you want to, you can pull the flag off, put the repeat in and put it in, okay? But I've put it in there. So as long as you end up with the repeat happening with the choose random flag inside, and then I want six flags shown, so I'm gonna make that repeat six times. So let's test that now and see what happens. Each time I click the green flag, I should have six random flags. There we go. Six. Six. Okay, and it's emptying each time, and each time there's a whole random selection on there. Now, there is a problem that you might have spotted. So examples like this. So I've got a list here, and actually I've got three, three cases here where I've got Bangladesh, and I've got two of Botswana. We need, we need it to be random, completely random, but all individual. We can't have the same flag more than once. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit to the bottom of this choosing the random flag bit. And all it does is it's it, when the flag list is created, it's there. When we use one of those flags, we want to take it out of this list so it's not available to be chosen anymore. So I'm going to go over to the variables bit. I'm going to go down, it's the, again, it's the dark orange list one because we're going to do something with this flags one. And this time it's not delete all, it's delete one. So I'm going to delete one of not the chosen flags of the flags because I want to remove it from the flags list once it's been selected. And what I need to remove is the item number. So, that, so you can see the numbers down the side. So if Turkey was selected, I would remove number four from this list. So that flag number that was chosen earlier is the item that I need to remove from that list. Let's have a look at how that works. So if I hit the green flag now, we see that this list now, it's chosen six countries and they are all different and left the three that weren't selected. Let's try that again, hit the green flag, six different countries were selected and left some behind. And I can keep clicking that, but because when one is selected, it's removed from the list, it can't be duplicated in there. So now that we've got that, let's, um, let's check, let's, basically um, set which one of them is the one that we're choosing to be the correct one. So at the, at the beginning, you saw the, the, the girl character in there saying, uh, click on Chile. Okay, so we need it to be able to, to detect which one of those is the correct one. Okay, so we're gonna go back up to this when the green flag is clicked one. We've chosen our six countries, and now what we want to do is pick a random one from those six. Now, when we pick that random one, we need to store that somewhere because we're going to have to say, remember which one was the correct answer for when we check whether the person's clicked on it or not. And it's really easy, we create another variable. So we're going to call this variable correct answer. So I'm going to do it again, correct. And I'm going to use camel case, so I'm going to go answer using all lowercase and then a capital A for the start of answer. And again, it's for all sprites. I'm going to click on OK. And all we're going to do is we're going to set that correct answer to a number. And it's a little bit like earlier on when we were picking um, a random flag from this flag to put in here. We're going to add that to, um, to this variable. Move across a little bit just so we can see. It's going to get a little bit longer in a second. Okay. 
So the item that we're going to pick, so we need to pick one of these items. So I'm going to get an item from this list. Okay, so I need item, it says number one, but we're going to change that a little bit to, to pick it at random. And it's meant it's got to be from the chosen flags, because remember the correct answer has to be one of those six. So if it says flags are in there, make sure you switch back to the chosen flags. And then, like we did earlier on, we're going to pick a random number, but we're going to make the random number the maximum being the length. So if six has been chosen, it's going to be a number between one and six. So we need to go to the green operators, pick random, and then I'm going to go back to variables again, and I'm going to get that length one. So I need to just go down to the dark orange uh, list bits, grab the length of one, and put it in the second of those random bits. And it should say length of, again, it needs to be chosen flags, not flags or something else. So make sure you've got that chosen flags list selected. So if I now hit the green flag, you can see now it's picking the word that's in that list. So it picks out the item and then chooses uh, shows you the name. So if I click on this now, Lithuania is the one that's in that list. Click on the green flag, Botswana is number four in that list. Japan is number one. So you can see it's picking a random list and it's giving me a random item from that list, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. So next part, getting on really well with this. The next part now is to, um, to create the flags on the page. So we've got a list of the flags we want to create. And we need to add those flags to the page and um, basically sh show them when they're needed. Okay. So I'm just going to zoom out because we're going to add, as we've done a lot of this um, block creating, let's add another block. So tell you what. I'm just going to move these out of the way a little bit, a bit of space. I'm going to zoom back in. You might not have to do this because you've got, probably got a bit more space on your screen. There we go. Let's leave it that. Okay. So we're going to create another block. And what we're going to do is call this block clone flag, or clone flags. Again, I've used camel case. And I'm going to click on OK. So we've got. So what does it need to clone the flag? So what we need to do is we need to show the flag on the screen. We need to make sure it goes to the, to the um, correct costume so that it shows the right actual flag itself. But we also need them to to not be on top of each other. We need to move them to side by side so that the they can all be seen. So let's start off by showing uh, so we're going to go uh, show first thing and we're going to start off by um, making it position in the in the top left hand corner of the screen so we're going to make sure that it goes yeah and what just in case so it should when you drag the go to x and y across from motion it should say minus 170 and 120. If it doesn't, X needs to be minus 170. Y needs to be the number 120. So then what we're going to do is we've just started that clone flag. So let's add it to the bottom. So when, once, the, um, once the flags have been chosen at random, we then need to clone the flags. And if I click on the green flag, you should see now that um, it's, the, the flag is shown on the screen. You can just about see it poking out, but it hasn't kind of positioned them in the right places and things like that. 
So what we need to do is we need to um, make them move and, and kind of go next to each other. So to do that, we're going to add some more to this clone flags bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to do it six times because we've got six chosen flags. But actually, and this is where it's slightly different to the instructions that are below. So I'm going to actually get the length. So if for some, if you've decided you want to make it for, choose from eight flags instead or ten flags, and um, it will detect the length of this and set the, the, this list. So I'm going to go to variables and the length of the chosen flags. Then I'm going to, so that gives me the, the number. So if for now it'll be six times that it does this. It's going to create a clone of itself. So I'm going to go to control and then right at the bottom, we've got create control, uh, create clone of myself. And then we're going to delete, go back to the variables, dark orange, um, we're going to delete number one of the chosen flags. Now, this is where we don't need to worry about changing that number. Number one is always the top of the list. So, we'll, And when we delete it, Denmark becomes top of the list, so that becomes number one. And then when that goes, Japan becomes number one. So you can see it, we don't, it's always going to be number one that's removed. And then what we need to do is we need to, before the next clone is made, we need to make it move to the right so that they spread out. So I'm going to change my X coordinate. Remember, X is horizontal on the screen. It's going side to side. And we're going to change it by 110 pixels. So let's see what that does now. So if I take my green flag, we can now see that we've got six flags, but they haven't changed their costume. So let's do that bit now. So I go to looks. And I'm going to go to switch costume two. Now it's got this bit where you can do the drop down here. However, what we want it to be, we want it to know the um, go to the, the, the costume that's called the same as the country that we're dealing with. And it's really easy to do that. And you just need to get the name of that country that's in number one of our chosen flags. And to do that, I get item number one of chosen flags. So I'm going to pop the, go back to variables and the list, dark orange ones, get the item one of chosen flags and pop that into the costume that I'm going to select. So now if I hit a green flag, you can see it's creating a list of the six flags. And they are now the correct, um, the correct colors. And you can see that this one would have been asking for Bangladesh as the. But there is a little bit of a problem because we've got one, two, three, four, five, well, four and a bit, and then they get cut off. So what we need to do is we need to, after three flags, we need to make it start a new line. And it's just a little bit of code that comes after our change x by. We're going to say if the um, if the, the the length of that flag is is three because it's already deleted, so it's then going to move down to the next line. Okay. So let's do that. So we need an equal sign in there because we can say if the length net as it goes down, so we've got six in there, it goes one, two, three. It's now got a length of three. So it then moves down to the next line and does the next bit. Okay, so we've got the length, we need variable, we need that list length again. So I'm going to go to variables down to the dark orange length. I'm going to say if it equals three, then we're going to change, and this is where it's a little bit again different to the instructions because 
um, in the instructions, um, it puts it down one line. But if we end up with um, more than six flags, it won't take it down another line. So we can't ever have more than six without them going off because um, they'll just keep on going to the same line. So we need to be a bit more variable. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change y and it's, we're, we're going to do minus 70. So you're going to take off 70 from the y coordinate. And we're going to set x. So notice the difference. So we've got set x to minus 170, but change y by minus 70. Okay. Now if I hit the green flag, we've now got the flags in there. Now, these lists are starting to get in the way of things. So at this point, I want to be able to see what's going on with the flags. So I'm going to go back to my variables um, and I'm going to untick each of the variables and the lists so that all that's left on my screen are the flags. There. Now I've got a little bit of it. What's going on there? Why is my extra um, on the end? Ah, so that delete. So these bits need to be. So we've done that and you'll see at the end, if I hit the green flag, there's an extra one of that final sprite. Now, that's because we've got the original sprite still showing on the screen. Um, so what we need to do on that is we need to hide it at the end. So we're going to go to looks, find hide, and pop it at the very end. So now if I hit the green flag, you can see I've got my six that are generated and that seventh one is hidden. It goes back to being hidden again. So that's the flag showing nicely. Um, our next bit now is to start the process of asking the question and checking whether we, some, the person clicks on the right answer. Okay, so we're going to see, we've got the clone flags working, so I'm just going to move that back out the way a little bit and go back up to this when the green flag is clicked one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to broadcast a message here, which is going to be used in the game to say that it's ready to ask a question. So broadcast, I'm going to change the message to be a new message, and I'm going to do announce. And you can use cap, um, camel case and things for this if you wanted to. Um, it doesn't matter. Again, it's not something that's seen by people. Um, so I'm just going to stick with the, what I'm doing and, and, and do camel case. Do, again, Scratch does allow you to do spaces, so it's up to you. So I've changed that name. Um, now what I need to do um, is create the sprite that asks the question. So I'm going to hover over the choose a sprite down here. Um, in the example, we've got Abby who asks the question. You can pick whoever you like. You could have it being a beetle asking the question things if you'd like. Um, I'm just going to stick to the same as the example. So 
So I'm going to click, click on Abby, but there's loads and loads of characters in here that you can have asking a question. So pick the one that you like. All I'm going to do is just move her uh, down to this bottom corner. So now what we need to do is listen for that message. So when our flag, or when the green flags click, we've got the, the bit of code that runs and it creates all the flags and then says it's done creating the flags, ready to ask the question. When Abby hears that message saying announce country, she needs to actually say the question that, that it needs to be answered. And all we're going to do is get her to say it. So I'm on it, I'm making sure Abby's selected here, clicked on her sprite. I'm going to do when I receive that message, the announced country message. I go to looks and I'm going to say, I'm going to do it just for two seconds. And what we need to do is say a sentence. And we did this in the last project where we joined things together. I'm going to join together the country and maybe click on, so click on Japan, click on Bangladesh, click on Italy. So it asks the, the person to actually do it. So I'm going to green operators. We've got that join command that we used last time. In the first bit, I'm going to do click on, and don't forget to put the space at the end. And what we're going to click on is the country that was stored in that variable for the correct answer. So I'm going to drag over that correct answer variable, go to variables, little kind of um, ellipsoid correct answer at the top, drag that over. Okay. Then what we need to do is we need to check that the answer that was given or clicked on uh, is the right one. So to do that, we're going to go back to the sprites in a minute um, and do that. So in fact, let's do it now. So click on, on flag, sprite, and we need to add another little bit of program on here. So it's going to start differently. So I'm going to click on events. And this starts when the sprite is clicked. So when the sprite is clicked, it's a separate little block that we're doing here. I'm going to say if Basically, if the correct answer is the same name as the, the costume name, great, because remember we called Ivory Coast flag Ivory Coast. Bangladesh was called Bangladesh and so on, so they, were, they all matched up. Um, if it's the same, then we say correct. If it's wrong, then we're going to say it was wrong. So we've got the, that two bits. If it, if it was correct, do something. Otherwise, and in computing, it's else. So if this else do something else. You'll see we need this one here that says if then with the else bit as well. I'm going to get the equals because if the correct answer equals the costume name, then we say it. So I'm going to go to the purple color um, looks one first and um, we're going to get the costume name. So you can see at the bottom, we've got some kind of variables to do with the costumes and things. So if I get the one, it says costume number to begin with, but actually we've got the little white arrow to say we can change it and you can actually choose the name. So we know the name, for example, was Bangladesh. The correct answer was Bangladesh. It will be in the correct answer bit. So if that equals that, we can then say, again, we want it for two seconds. Congratulations, well done, something like that. Correct. And then otherwise, we're going to say in the else bit, it wasn't, it didn't match, it wasn't correct. So sorry, wrong answer. Oh, not spell. There we go. There we go. So if I now hit the green flag, let's test that. So we should. Get the question, click on Chile. If I click on this one, I know is Ivory Coast, we set that before. 
uh, sorry, Lithuania was the wrong one. So we said that before. And if I hit the green flag again, click on Turkey. I know this one here is Turkey. So if I click on that, it tells me it's correct. So we've actually got it doing the correct stuff when we want it to do. So what we now can do is we've, we've got it testing us, telling us whether we've got it right or wrong. And um, what we now need to do is um, have a score that it keeps. And we also want it to keep on restarting again each time. So first thing I need to do is I'm going to go back to Abby. Just because there's less on here, so it's a little bit less. Actually, no, let's, let's do it on the flag because we've, we've got we, the bit we need to add it to is on the flag. So let's stick to the flag. OK, so I've clicked on the flag, make sure that's selected. I'm going to add a new variable. And I'm going to call it score. And it's for all sprites. And you see it appears in the top corner, which is great. And what we need to do is when the green flag is clicked, we need the score to start at zero because, you know, we don't, you don't want to start a game where the scores already got something in it. So I'm going to set, not change, set score to zero. Make sure it says zero. And then all we need to do is go down to the when this green flag is clicked. So the bit where we said whether where it says correct or wrong answer is where it's correct, that bit adds one to the score. Because if it's correct, the score goes up by one. So we're going to change change not set we'll change not the correct answer we're going to change the score by one and add one to the score hit that's hit the green flag botswana i'm going to guess this one oh it was, that was correct and look i've got a score of one so it's added one to the score so that's perfect working perfectly what we now need to do is make it go and start all over again so we're going to do this. Now, we're going to change. So at the moment, this let me just separate it off. So this bit started when the green flag is clicked and that actually started, essentially started a new round. It asked a new question and did everything that we needed to do. Now, what we need to do is we need to separate a couple of bits. So I'm going to leave the green flag on there. But the only thing that I'm going to attach to it is when this green flag is clicked. Sorry, when this green flag is clicked, it's set the score to zero. I then need to add one more thing to it that we haven't already got, which is a broadcast. So we're going to broadcast that the game is starting, or the round is starting. So we've got announced country on there, but we want a new message. So I'm going to click new message, start round, and I'm going to um, camel case it again. Okay, so I've got start round message being broadcast when the green flag is clicked. But now I've got nothing that starts this bit of program that we had earlier on. But we know that this bit of program is the bit that starts each time a round starts. So each, each time an answer is a question is answered, we create a flag list, we empty the chosen flags, we then choose the flags that we want, we display them, then we get her to ask the question. So that bit of program there is what we need. And it happens when he receives that message to start a round. So when I receive, start off as announced country, but I'm going to change it to be start round. And then the final, final, final part of all of this is when this flag's clicked, we do correct or wrong. We've got that bit there where we've changed the score as well. At the bottom of that, we're going to broadcast that start round again. And what that does, is it it says was it correct or wrong gives you a chance to see whether you're right or wrong it adds the score if it needs to 
and then it actually it starts this bit again to create a new list of flags and ask a new question. So let's test that. I hit the green flag, asking for Belgium. I know Belgium's this one. So that says correct. Adds one to the score. Oh, but we've got a little problem here. What's going on there? So we're going to have a cleanup message. And basically what we need to do is we need to delete the clones that were already there and things like that. Okay. And what we're doing is on the flag is we're saying, um, when I receive a message to clean up, we're going to um, delete ourselves essentially. And it's on the flag, so I go to when I receive, so events, when I receive, but it's going to be a new message. We're going to do a new message and I'm going to call it clean up. Again, I'm going to do camel case, clean and up. And what I want to do is I want to delete the clone. So I'm going to go to control down towards the bottom and you've got delete this clone. Those extra flags basically are because the originals aren't, when it's being cloned, aren't removing themselves. So I delete the clone. And then what we need to do is before it starts a new round, is we need to add a broadcast there. So we go broadcast. Again, it's after that correct and wrong answer bit, but before we start a new round, broadcast. I don't want it to be announced country, I want it to be clean up. So let's try that again now. So I hit the green flag, click on Japan, let's see, does it give us the correct? There you go, perfect. And it's actually, let's try a different one. Wrong answer, didn't answer this, add to the score. Wrong answer, didn't add to the score. Let's try Botswana, correct. And we've gone up and scored. So you can see it's all now working perfectly. And that's it. So that's the that's where we're going to get um, on this game today. And um, it's quite a complex one. I hope you've enjoyed doing it. Um, I'm certainly going to be playing it for the rest of the day and um, trying to test my knowledge on flags. I'm going to add some more flags in myself as well. Um, feel free to carry on playing and enjoying it as much as I do. I look forward to seeing what you've made. Uh, don't forget, when you've done this, you need to hit share. And then um, you need to hit add to studio and add it to the, um, there'll be a, a choose the flag Drupal files one that you can add it to. Okay, so I'll, I'll put that in before you get to do this. Great stuff. I look forward to seeing your, um, your games and playing them myself and being tested on the flags that you've generated as well. See if you can catch me out. See you soon.